Hi, welcome back. I have seen some wonderful, wonderful block number ones. I'm really getting excited to see the finished um, table runners. Um, I don't know how many are doing the small or the large. Um, I think most that I've seen, I think, are doing the small. Um, who knows? You might decide you're going to do another one later and make that one large. It's They're really cool. So some of you I know are not posting pictures, um, but there's a reason to do so. Dawn, and talking to Dawn the other day, she's, she says, hey, why don't we give a gift card, a $25 gift card, to somebody at the end of all of this? I thought, well, okay, that's a good idea. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is every time, when you post a picture, like if you post a picture of block one, your name goes into a hat. When you post a picture of block two, your name goes into a hat. Next week is the end of the, uh, the actual class portion, um, and your name will go into a hat for that if you've posted that picture. Now, if you post two pictures, that doesn't count. It, it only is one. So even if you aren't, haven't done block one yet, you can still do that. You have until a week after we're done, so two weeks from, from today, to post your pictures, and then your name will go into a hat, and then we'll draw a name. I'll probably have my husband dress up and, <laughs> and pull a name. Um, but I think that'll be fun to do that. And everybody, of course, can use a $25 gift card. So um, speaking of money, again, I've got to put my glasses on because I made some notes. This is a class. This is a virtual class. So everything that you purchase, if you say it's, you know, during the class that, that you're taking the the um, spring so long or you're participating in that, you get 15% off. So most of the things that Dawn has put in the on the Facebook page has the sale price. I think she did that with the uh, seam align glue, the easy press. Uh, so the prices are reflected there. I think the wool mats as well, which the wool mats are 20% off. Um, so it's more than your 15%, 20% off um, through the end of April. So I've had a couple questions about the, the wool mat. Why do I like it? A, a, a couple things. One, you can take them, you know, anywhere. I like the, the softness of it, the thickness. And what I tend to do with the wool mat is, um, before I press something, I'll just apply some heat on it. Just rub the iron on it a little bit and then put the fabric down that I'm pressing and then press the piece. So it's actually, you're getting heat from both sides. So it's, it's really cool that way. And then, so imagine if you use the easy press solution, you've got the wool mat that's hot from underneath, the easy press solution, and then the heat from the top. It makes it super flat. <clears throat> there are a lot of different sizes and they have the, the sizes listed um, in the, um, on the website and on the Facebook page. So I mentioned the easy press and the seam align. Um, I, I want to remind you, you don't need to use very much of that. Just tiny little droplets of the seam align glue and the easy press. You don't have to pump that every time and see the liquid. You're going to know that it's there. Um, you shouldn't be using very much at all. It should not be soaked. So um, some of you, I think, might need to ease up a little bit on that. Somebody says, oh, it seems to be going um, pretty fast. So that shouldn't. So both the seam align and the easy press solution are part of the shop's filler up Friday. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but filler up Friday is the fourth Friday of every month. And that is, you could bring your empty container or near empty container and they'll fill it up at a reduced price. When you buy this, I think this is $7.28 if you just get the glue. Well, you're paying for the applicator. You're paying for the container and the applicator. So there's a price, and you know, it's it's less. I think it's like $4.50 or something like that for, for this. The filler up Friday includes um, Best Press also, the 16 ounce of Best Press. It includes, um, I think that's the 16 ounce. <laughs> um, it includes uh, Bernina oil as well. So just check the shop. It's on the calendar. You go to the website, it's on the calendar, and it tells you everything that's there. Okay, so I made an update to the first pattern. I recognize that there are a lot of new quilters here today with us or joining us for this. And what I should have done 
And what I've updated and I've written block two to include this, every step of the way, I'm telling you what size your unit should be. If it's not, then you need to figure out what was wrong and you need to make adjustments, all right? Um, so each step along the way um, is helpful so that you don't get all the way done and you realize, oh, it's too big or it's too small or something doesn't match. So hopefully that'll help. And I will have that for, like I said, today and then uh, next week's lessons, it's, it's in there as well. So we're good. So we're doing the star block today. Now I know that that looks a little scary, but I've broken it down into some really easy parts. This piece here, the top section here, you've already done that. In essence, you know how to do that because that is simply a strip piece unit. You're taking a background piece, two of the accent three, you're sewing that length together, you're gonna to be pressing the way that it tells you in the pattern, and then you're gonna subcut. You need four of those subcuts for every one of these blocks. If you're doing the short version, you need two blocks. If you're doing the long, you need three. So we're gonna talk about the corners here. The corners are half square triangles. The corners, and many of you already know how to do half square triangles, all right, which are really used a lot. I have a separate video on half square triangles about how to make them accurate. I also talk about the way that some people will um, have you cut. They'll cut like a seven eighths. I don't do that. I give you some room for error and allow you to trim it up. So I talk about that and the accuracy um, on how to make half square triangles, um, to square them up properly, to make sure that the right size and, and I show you how to do that with whether you have a square ruler or a rectangular. That's key. If you only have a rectangular ruler, you can still do this. It's easier with a square, but that's okay. The key is having a 45 degree angle. And I show you how to do that. I also am going to show you, um, for you left-handers out there, I'm not a lefty, but I'm teaching myself and I haven't done it for a while, but um, I show the trimming using your left hand as well. So that'll make it a little easier for you. Okay, so we have videos besides this one. We have the half square triangles, talk about trimming, talk about, or well, sewing it first of all, trimming and um, pressing and making sure that it's accurate all the way through because that's, that's gonna be key. That's gonna be in when you go to put the blocks together. Okay, I also, when I'm doing anything with, with points, or I'm coming, like when I'm gonna sew the half square triangles together, like this, I should get you the one. This, and see I've got this line here. This point, how many of you have your sewing machine that's hungry and it eats the point? I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that, or not have that happen. I use a leader and ender, and that's included in one of the videos as well. I talk about that. What I'm doing is I'm actually sewing on two projects at a time. I learn from experience, use very different fabric, very different because sometimes they end up in the same project and they're not supposed to be if they're too close. So I do a lot of Quilts of Valor. So I have some two and a half inch squares of red and blue. I'm simply sewing them together. I have them alongside them as sewing machine and in between steps, I show you how to, how to do this. Um, and it has to do with having um, something that you're feeding in and then stopping with your feed dogs down or your needle in the down position, which, which makes your feed dogs down. So by the time I'm done with these table runners, you know, I'm gonna have a pretty hefty stack of these ready to be put into my quilt. So I'm pretty excited about that. I have another video on the flying geese. Flying geese, we're using the flying geese method of no waste. There's a lot of different methods for flying geese as well. This I find to be very accurate. It's um, pretty straightforward. I have the video step-by-step -step on how to do it. We're using the flying geese for our star points. You're gonna get some beautiful, beautiful star points um, from these. Now the hard part about flying geese for many people is making sure that they're the right size. And I show you how to do that again with either ruler. 
square or rectangular and it's really going to help you. I also show that left-handed. Um, I think that that's really important to make sure that you know how to um, to use get that the most accurate because if the points are off it's a pointless wonder and we're all just you know beside ourselves with that. Also I show when we go to put the block together I'm showing you how to do it with glue and with pins because I know a lot of you don't have the glue and you have no intention of buying it and that's fine. So I'm going to show you the, the ways to use both of them and how to keep those points accurate. Um, some of you might have heard about um, sewing near the X. I, I talk about that in, in the videos. So be sure you um, watch those. And the reason, part of the reason I did them as a separate video as well is because I wanted to make sure that they're going to be up on the site all the time on the Facebook page. And if you need to go back, you find another project. Did you make flying geese? It might not be the same size, but it's the same technique. And you all you have to do is go back and find it. And that'll make it easy. One thing I suggest using is a stiletto of some sort. Um, I use this one. This is um, by Annie. It's my favorite. It has a little um, cap to it. It's super sharp. I can push the fabric in. I'll show you how to keep your straight points. You know how sometimes when we're sewing, we don't stay a quarter of an inch at the end in the beginning. The stiletto helps, and I have some video on, on that. Um, so the video, I've got cutting, um, pressing, and that, and the sewing. This is our first attempt at the sewing, so hopefully you'll be able to see what we're showing. Um, and this is key. Um, oh, th this by anything has, has like flat on two sides, so... You know, when I drop it, which is often, it rolls for a little bit, but then it just stops. So it's pretty cool. Um, so I think to do this block, I typically chain piece everything. You might want to try uh, do one block first if you're new. Also, when we're putting the whole block together, and I don't remember if I said this in the video, but when you're putting your rows together, because you have those points to match, Sometimes when you're new at this, what would help is to increase your stitch length and do like a basting stitch all the way through. Because if you have to stop, and to, or if you have to take it out, it's going to be much easier and you're not going to mess up the, the integrity of the fabric. Um, but what the heck, if you think, if you know what you're doing, you don't even have to do that. Um, just give it a try and, and go from there. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing these stars. As you can see... In the first one here, my accent two, my purple, is um, the star all the way around. That's also going to be used as part of the border. But down on the bottom one, this one, I did, I'm going to pull these out here. I did a um, fussy cut. And let's get that. So I fussy cut my center. And then from the fabric, I also then cut my star points. So this fabric is not, this actual fabric is not going to be used again on, um, in the border. I'm doing something completely different with this one. Let's bring this so you can see it. Remember I said that you can make this larger by putting a regular border on it? On this one, because this is going to be a um, bed runner. I think what I'm going to do is after I put this all together, I'm going to take this fabric and I'm going to put an outside border. We'll talk about that at the next the next class. So this, pretty cool, huh? Pretty fun. Creates like this halo effect. And then when it gets next to the other block, it's going to look a bit like this. You can't see. <laughs> you can see on the back. I had that one quilted and bound, so we're done with that. Um, that's pretty exciting. And so this is a little bit better one. So you've got the star here, and then you're gonna be adding it to your other block. Don't put them together yet though, because we have the border treatment that we're putting on first. We're actually adding onto the block, and then we're going to make the blocks larger and sew those together. Don't put the blocks together yet, okay? This, I'll talk about how I did this applique in the block one. So I'm pretty excited. 
um, be sure you post your pictures. If you have any questions, uh, just drop us a line on the Facebook page and I'm pretty excited. I know it's, I always love this part when you have the blocks coming together and you get to see what it's going to look like. Pretty exciting. All right. Uh, talk to you.